So hi, I'm Norman. I'm part of the AV design group here at Crutchfield. And one of the things that happens a lot is that when people go to mount a TV up on a wall, is that they don't want to see the wires hanging down to plug into their outlet. So today we're going to show you how to run the wires inside the wall using uh, UL approved uh, wiring. Um, and I'm going to show you a kit that we sell. It's a, called a power relocation kit. And we sell a couple different brands. This particular one also has a sheetrock saw. Um, some of the kits don't have a sheetrock saw, but you can buy them at Lowe's, Home Depot for like seven or eight bucks. So show you what comes in the kit. You do get the instructions. And in this particular case, the instructions are actually pretty well detailed, good drawings. Power cord, and this looks like a regular ordinary power cord extension, you know, female one and male on the other. Um, if your walls are, are um, dark tone or something like that and the white would stand out, you can go to Lowe's Home Depot and just get a black version of this where it's three prong on one end and three prong on the other. But this, this will work fine for what we're gonna try and do today. Here's the sheetrock saw. One of the things about sheetrock saws is that they are really, really sharp. So this one, as you'll notice, it actually comes in its own guard. So here, I'm locking it in position. You're going to cut two holes in the sheetrock, one down low and one up high. The one that's going to go down low, this is going to go right here. And this power cord, in this particular case, plugs into here, and then this is going to plug in right here. And notice we got tons of extra wire here. The reason why they give you so much is that sometimes the best place to mount the TV, there's just a, there's not an electrical outlet right here. So you can have it four or five feet one way to the other and still be able to bring power to this. We're going to cut a hole here, mount this one here. This is actually going to go inside the bracket. You can mount this above, you can mount it below. But typically it works much better if you can mount it inside because it's all hidden by the TV. And if you can do it, it allows the cable to stay hidden, stuff like that. If you've got like a 55 inch, 65 inch, 75 inch TV, something like that, you could even mount it above. But I usually have pretty good luck mounting it right inside. So now, one of the things that's interesting is, is that, you know how most people are right-handed? So most electricians are right-handed. And one of the things that will happen is when they're doing the rough in, you know, before the sheet rocks up for any of the wiring in it, when the house is being built, they'll hold the box with the left hand and they're hammering the, the, the two nails to hold the, the box in behind. So about 80% of the time, wherever you see an outlet, the stud's going to be right here that's running all the way up. So we're going to put this box on this side of the stud. And the, in this particular case, we'll just do that. So this here, this here, and I'm going to show you the three things that you'll need to be able to do this is a Phillips screwdriver, a regular ordinary pencil, and a hammer. And you may not need the hammer. So one of the things that happens with this one down below is that there's ears, like once you cut the hole, this fits in there, and you take your screwdriver, And as you start turning it, these flip out and stop. And what happens is, is that the sheetrock actually is sandwiched right in here. So the plate's on one side, the tab's on the other. And it, it's pretty solid when you do it. Because you're using the tabs, you want to make sure, remember how the, the stud's running up here? You want to make sure you got roughly, a, like the stud is like to right here. You want to make sure you've got another inch of sheetrock before you start cutting the hole so that this tab can grab behind the sheetrock. If you cut right along the stud, this one can't flip out and it's got nothing to grab onto. So here.
Now one of the things that this is actually useful for is you can get a Ziploc bag, you know, like a sandwich bag or something like that, put this in here, and this is a great way, if you're going to the store and you're trying to match it up, this is the paint sample so that the guy at the paint counter can match it up, make sure it works. Otherwise, you just throw it away. And then, when you're installing this, there is two openings. One opening is open to the air, and that's the part that faces up. And one of the things that I like doing is I like cutting the hole so that it's a friction fit, so that it, the sheetrock itself is actually holding it in place. It helps prevent torquing and stuff like that. You don't have to do that, but the, if you can, it just makes for a better fit and the, it just it's less wobble. There you go, see how, and that's roughly about the same height. And visually it looks pretty good. Do not lock this thing down now because we need the open hole for next step and I'll show you that in a minute. So the studs running all the way up. Now we're gonna mount this one. If you remember on this one, we had the open hole facing up on this one, which is the one that goes behind the TV, we have the open hole facing down. And the reason why you want to have that is so that as the HDMI cable gets fed up, it comes in like that. So now, now one of the things that you can do, normally the TV's already been hung on the wall and you'll notice that the power cable and the uh, HDMI cables are usually not in the same side. So if the power's on one side and HDMI on the other, just center it. Some TVs, though, will have the power outlet and the HDMI all on the same side. If you want to make it a little easier for you, mount the box to the left or to the right to make it just easier just to plug in the stuff. If it's split, just, just put it in the center. So I'm inside the, the same bay that I cut down there. And when you've done your cut like this, you put your saw on the same thing I did down below, I meant to say it, you want to put the saw blade on the outside of the cut. And you'll do this two or three times because trying for the friction fit. And right now I'm just eyeballing it to make sure that I'm still, that when this goes up against the wall, it's not touching this or the other way down here. So box is in, we know that part's right. The next thing you want to do, because you're trying to hide not only the power cable, but also the HDMI cable, if you're using the same HDMI cable that you're using before, sometimes it's just not long enough and you might need to get a longer one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it down. Remember, this is an interior wall that does not have any insulation. And I'm going to reach in here and pull it out. And, and remember, this is a six foot and I gotta be able to reach the equipment and I've gotta be able to reach where 
you know, if the HDMI connection on the TV is here or here. So sometimes six switch is usually enough. I always fudge it and get seven just to give me some slack. So I've got the HDMI cable run through. I'm feeding it through here. There, that looks right. Handy HDMI or a built screwdriver. There. Then this is you don't need to use this cover. I like using the cover, it just dresses it up and makes it look nice. And there's four clips right here, and they fit the four openings right here. That part's done. Now, remember there was a long white cable off the back up for the Romex? We're gonna reach in down here. There you go. And the excess can just go in the wall. Now one thing I should have mentioned earlier and I didn't do it was that um, I usually take some plastic um, it could even be a 33-gallon uh, uh, trash can liner like you use for a kitchen trash can. That works fine. And I lay it down right here, and I, um, that way you can catch all the, the sheetrock dust. So now on the back of this, there's two screws, and you're going to undo this cover. And this is the part of, the, of this particular item, this relocation kit, I like a lot. And this pops off. And let's see if I can pull it out a little bit more. And this fits like this. And you can hear it snap into place. Then this goes right back on top. And you have to wiggle a little bit for it to snap into place. And then you put the screw back. And you put the screw back. And remember, the, the opening here is facing up. Rock. It's a trim plate. And then this plugs into your equipment, that plugs into the back of the TV. Now one of the cool things that you can do is, is that we're here, we're tapped into an outlet. A lot of times people have their surge protector plugged into here and they'll have their surround sound receiver or their cable box all plugged in. This can also plug into the same surge protector so that the TV is also surge protected as well as all the other equipment. So it's just, just a neat little tip. Um, but right now we just plug it in here. So that's hot, this is hot, and you, I'm sitting on the floor and you're done. <laughs> so that's it, I and mean, it really is pretty quickly. If I hadn't been talking so much, it would have been a lot even quicker. But you can, typically you can do this in about 20 minutes. If you've got more questions, it is totally cool to call, email, uh, snail mail, we even do that, uh, here at Crutchfield, and we're glad to help. Thank you very much.